Hello, hello, hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Sayyam and welcome back to the channel, right? Today, we're going to solve the third problem of today's contest. And sorry for the voice, guys. Today, my voice is not very good. My throat is not working perfectly, but I will try to cover and explain everything a bit. So, please, 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 for today, uh, handle this issue. But no worries. And surprisingly, this question, I'm very surprised. Lead code repeated question. The same question, same question have already occurred in this POTD, right? And I've already remembered this. Means we have made a video also. Made a video on this. If somebody was following me or solving POTDs, he would have done this in seconds. It's a very simple question. Exact same question. Just this line was not there. And the question remains same. Exactly same. K remains K. Like what do you need to do? You want to find, you're given a positive integer K. Find the smallest integer n divisible by k that consists of only the digit 1 in the decimal representation. Example 1, 1, 1, 1 and all. Return an integer that minimum number of digits required means a number. Smallest integer means you want the minimum number of ones, right? In the decimal representation, if no such n exists, then return minus 1. Exact same question. I have explained here two approaches. Do check it out. The link is in the description. I will share one approach here. You For the second approach, you can check the more optimal. You can check the link is in the description. Okay. Let's get started. That's how you can build the intuition here. Okay. So, you're given with K. Okay. Perfectly fine. Hmm. And you want to find a smallest integer. So, it's have all ones. Okay. One, 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 one. And something like this going on. Remember that k can go up to 10 power 5, right? See, here's a number. If you're trying to build, it can go outside the integer range as well. There's no restriction over that. Because if you go above 64 digits, 64 digits, it would be greater than long, long. Yes, I am. You're absolutely right about it. It would be outside the integer range. That means, we cannot make the number keep making the number again and again. Just, just simulating these numbers and finding the first number which is uh, greater than that, uh, like divisible by k, that would be very difficult. And then we don't know when to stop. And there is a minus one case also. Like it is possible that we won't find any number itself of this form that is divisible by k. That is also possible, right? Let's say uh, there are a couple of numbers which are of the form like this, right? So, how would we know that? Hmm. So, in these kind of questions, when you got a modulo and something like that, right? What you're concerned with? You want to find that remainder of the number of the number with k should be 0. That is your concern. And we already know the modular arithmetic. What does the modular arithmetic says? Modular arithmetic says that if you do if you want to calculate n modulo k, you can take the modulus. This is also same. Very, very important. This is very important. If you do take a repetitive modulus, right, then also it remains. The mod does not change. For example, for example, if you have 8 modulo 2 and then you again may take the modulo 2, you will say 0 and then 0 modulo 2 is again 0. Why this will help? This will help because it will shrink our number. It will shrink our number to the range of k minus 1. This range n modulo k lies in the range 0 to k minus 1. Right. Now we are not worried about, oh, it will go out of the integer range. Right. It will go out of the integer range. Now we don't need to worry about it. We can simulate this. How we can simulate this? We can start a number with 1. Then what are you going to do? Just multiply by 10 the previous number and add 1 to it. Similarly, what you can do? You want 11, multiply this bit by 10 plus add a 1. So it is like 1, this is 1, 1, this is 1, 1, 1. So you can just multiply the previous number by 10 and add 1 to it and your number will be simulated like this. Now, since I already told you we cannot keep on doing this because it can go outside of the integer range, so we will maintain this with module OK. So we'll maintain this prev also with modulo k. Whatever you can. Let's say k you take as 3. Okay, let's take an example of 3. So what we can do, we can maintain 1. 
that after maintaining this 10 into 1 plus 1, modulo 3 will maintain. That, that will be what? 11 modulo 3. That will be, that remains same. Because I already told you modulo operation, it's a linear operation. It won't change. You can keep on doing modulo. Actual modulus remains same. Because we don't concern about the number. We are not finding the number. We are just finding the number of digits in the number. So it will be like 2. Now, instead of multiplying with 11 into 10, you just can multiply 2 into 10 plus 1 modulo 3. And it will give you 0. That means what? 1, 1, 1 is the number which is divisible by 3, which is the number 3 digits we require. Minimum number of. Right? Oh, same. Yes. See, 21 modulo 3. That means what? Okay, we can simulate this. But same, there is a case of minus 1 also. Yeah. Let's say take an even example. Can a number of 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 of the form can be divisible by even number? No, say him. You cannot. So, how would you think about it? What is the problem? Hmm. How would you check that whether this number is divisible by uh, this curve? Like, it would be an impossible case. Yes, yeah, I am. That is a good uh, thing you are talking about. Let me just think about it. Uh, it is happening. See, we are maintaining the number module, okay? Right, Sayam. And it will be always in the range 0 to k minus 1. Uh, right, Sayam. Why it is not, uh, uh, like, it can, like, impossible would be there. Hum stuck kyo ho jayenge. Sayam, if this number repeat, repeat, then there would be a problem, right? Because what are you going to do? If pref, you already explode this pref and then you again do this 10 plus 1. This will go into infinite loop, right? Because we have keep doing that and again we reach the same modulo. Why will we reach the same modulo? Because we are doing a modulo. Okay. For example, you take uh, modulo 2. A number, it's very, uh, like you can take 1, then it will take 11. It is, okay, let's say take 4. Let's try to take the ex example of 4. Then we'll write on this. 1 is 1 only modulo 4. If we do 11 modulo 4, it would be what? 3. So we will store the second number as 3. The modulos we are storing. Now what we're going to do? 3 into 10 plus 1, which is 33. And modulo 4 is what? Uh, modulo 4 is 1. See, again we found this modulo as 1. Because we are storing only the modulo part, this will again go. like It will go like this. 3, then 1, then 3. And keep on. Keep on going. That is a problem. In, in this case, we have to return a minus 1. That means what? We figure out, if we found the same modulo again, there is a trap. There is a trap. It is impossible to form a number. Right? Absolutely right. So, what you can do? You can maintain. How you can maintain that you have previously you said? Can, you can maintain a map or a set. Set you can check whether you have already explored this number or not, like this remainder or not, because we are only worrying about the remainder. Otherwise, just keep on counting the digits. And obviously, you go in the incremental order. If you found a number, which is modulo k is 0, stop that process and just return from that. Much simple. Right? We already explored the case of k equals to 3. We can keep doing that. Firstly, we make 1. Then we maintain modulo 3. We found a number. We found this. This is what? Uh, modulo 3 was 2. Then 2 into 10 plus 1 which is equal to 21, 21 modulo 0. We mo found the mod and the digit is 3, perfectly fine. But in the case of 4, we again found that uh, remainder itself, which is the impossible case, and we will return the minus 1 straight away from there. There is another approach which does not require a set. Think about it. The video is, the link is in the description. I explained this with the help of a pigeonhole principle. I will give you a hint. Try to think about it. And if you are not able to get it, see that video, pigeonhole principle. You don't need the set actually. I will give you a glimpse that what you can do, you can try out because how many possible remainders are possible? 0 to k minus 1, Sayyam. That means, that means what? If you get a remain, like, if, 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 if this, will this number of iterations, will this number of iterations, you don't find that modulo is 0. You don't find that modulo is 0. That is what, what does that mean? Means one of the remainder got repeated. In this case, you don't know which, which, which remainder is repeated in this approach because you're not concerned with that, right? You're only concerned with the, uh, with whether it is repeated or not. 
what value is repeated you can track with the help of this approach but if you only concern that whether it is repeated what you can do you can just run a loop the same thing above thing that keep doing that simulating the prime into 10 plus 1 and taking the modulo right here the change is you're not taking a set or kind of thing just keep simulating it till k minus till k iterations you can say that and once these k iterations are over and still you don't find a number which is divisible look like a you can straight away return minus 1 try to think about it it's a pigeon hole principle that you have already try out k plus 1 means what you got k plus 1 remainders but there are only k possible remainders that means one of the remainders got repeated you have to return minus 1 one from means you don't know the remainder which got repeated but there is surely there is a repeated so yeah you can implement this approach also the code of the this will be in the description you can check it out at this right let me just quickly show you the implementation as well this is not a very difficult problem so what do you want to do so it's very simple you can maintain a set right you can in, in, initially maintain a remainder like initially the remainder is one and the number of digit is also one then what you going to do you can insert okay this remainder we have already explored so what you going to do you going to do a while loop while the remainder modulo k is not equal to 0 until that you you form a new number previous the remainder was actually you can treat as previous the remainder previous remainder into 10 plus 1 and you obviously increase the digits also because you have considered that number then you make the remainder modulo is equals to val whatever the number you got current number modulo k because you don't want to explode it then you will check oh whether is remainder we already explored because this is a new remainder we got right if you already explored this that is definitely we have to return minus 1 right otherwise you can keep going this loop and if you at some point of time remainder modulo k is become zero you straight away return count because the, it will come out of the while loop right i hope you understand that and then apply and solve using the pigeon hole pigeon hole the only change is you just run a loop from for 0 to k and then try to check about it 0 to k or i think 1 to k something like that try to check that okay how you can solve using this approach as well right so yeah and if you like the video make sure you to subscribe to channel and we'll see in the next video then till then keep learning